Hello everyone, this is Devin Adams. Uh, welcome back to my next video in creating an advanced MSC4 test lab. So, um, I'll hop right to it. I'm getting really sick of like reintroducing myself. So hopefully you guys have been watching these in some sort of, uh, 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 what you call it, order. Anyways, you can also tell I'm progressively getting more tired throughout the day. Uh, anyways, alright guys, so I don't know to call this a bonus video meaning like required or not I am still on the fence about it but let's back up for a second uh, so this is where we're gonna configure the PF sense to act as that pseudo WAN connector okay now in in our lab environment and also in the previous videos I showed you guys how to do like a, a Centox or maybe it was Ubuntu some kind of Linux box to do what we're trying to accomplish here okay I just thought I'd take the opportunity to try something different so if this is not your cup of tea and all you need is that device to do some routing and natting uh, go jump to those videos in that other playlist and you can just skip the next couple of videos so uh, but uh, it really bugged me when I went and brought in PF sense though and they stopped supporting the embedded um, uh, version of it which the template was written for after two three five so I was playing around with this a little bit earlier um, and I, I found a way how to upgrade it so in this video our goal is to power up this PF sense and essentially get it upgraded and that's really our goal so can I do everything else afterwards going forward maybe most likely but I would at least like that PF sense to stay up to date and, and get upgraded so here we go so the first thing you guys are gonna need to do is power on the device now I have not changed anything here except for move a switch around uh, I also changed the objectives I said point-to-point -point connection uh, what I really meant by that is you know we're going from a inside out approach to our configuration so we're doing the PF sense first and then we're going to work our way out here of configuring our Florida gates and uh, anyways so let's go ahead and boot it up. I haven't changed anything though with the cabling or anything like that. So when it first powers on, you can double click the router icon and you will see PF Sense booting up. All right. So, uh, and it's doing a lot of stuff, especially when it first turns on. It takes a while. So I'm actually going to pause the video here until I get some kind of prompt. And once I get the prompt, I'll go ahead and resume the video, but the last thing you need is to hear me breathing like Darth Vader. Can you guys tell like I have asthma? I'm always like, now <gasps> we're gonna, yeah, it's just because I suck at breathing. So anyways, <laughs> try not to breathe heavy. Well, I just love my Fortigaze that much. I'm not too sure. So, but um, gosh, I just can't shut up either. All right, guys, I'm pausing the video. I'll be back once this gets done doing its thing. So see you in just a moment. All right, guys, so if you waited a few moments there, depending on the speed, uh, this is the final result. Now, it didn't ask me for anything. It's supposed to be embedded, and like I said, they, they, they stopped supporting this version of it. Um, and that just kind of bugged me because GNS3, GNS3, PFSense is constantly evolving. It's a community-based um, um, open source firewall router solution it's amazing maybe someday I'll learn how to use it <laughs> and actually <laughs> actually record some videos about it in fact I still don't know if this is gonna work for our lab environment but I record my failures right guys so uh, so as you can see here I mean it's it's old it's old uh, this video right now is some time in April in 2018 and the last release of this nano BSD that we did in a previous video was three two three five so what I thought was interesting just for kicks when I was playing with this a little bit last night there is an option 13 well let me back up real quick let me back up so you guys are only seeing two interfaces here because that's the default out of the box right and I was telling you guys how the first interface will always look for a WAN connection or an internet connection and it will try to get an IP address via DHCP. And that's exactly what it did from that NAT cloud. Okay, And in theory, we really don't care what happens beyond that, uh, that WAN interface, right? 
just like the real internet. I mean, a few hops away, and we're just like, whatever. Uh, our gateway is going to be this guy right here out of the box. Now, we're going to play around with these, but the first WAN connection, which is to this FortiGate port 1, it's going to be 192.168.1.1. So that's going to be the next hop of our default gateway on our on our FortiGates. Okay? Um, and you don't see the other interfaces here because we have to enable them. And we could do it either through here or we can do it through the web interface. I really want to show you the web interface of PFSense because it is freaking awesome. Anyways, sidetrack. Squirrel. The whole point of this video is to upgrade it. So I was curious. Now back to our regularly scheduled program. I just I'm the worst at recording these things, guys. Anyways, uh, but here we go. Number thirteen, upgrade from console. And I'm like, huh? If it's not supported anymore, I wonder what happens if I do press thirteen. So I went ahead and selected thirteen, and I let it kind of do its thing. All right. Now I cannot remember. Um, I can't remember how long it took. But essentially, you can see right away that it recognized that, okay, the next one going up, the next OS version is, is a major one. So that's why all those, ah, you know, are flashing there. And there it is upgrading the repositories, right? And then it's going to go ahead and do its little comparison and, and all that good stuff. And there it is upgrading the repos, the repositories, blah, 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 fetching, okay? Now... It says that it can't do it. Look at that. Boo! It's no longer supported. You can find instructions on how to convert. Ooh! Right? If you go to this this URL. So I'm all thinking to myself, okay, if, if we could just easily do this, this would still be easier to do the conversion, maybe, than how I was going to do it before. And that would be to get the ISO, get it into GNS3, get a blank hard drive, install it manually right uh, eject the ISO ugh, ugh, ugh. so I went ahead and I copied that URL all right just like that and I loaded up a cool web browser look at that it still thinks I'm trying to download images and I pasted it in there and it did it took me to instructions on, on how to do it and there's some caveats here and that's what's so cool about being in like a test environment I'm like I don't care about caveats if it doesn't work I'll throw it out and try something else but uh, essentially you know it goes through all the steps here and it didn't look too bad right until I came down here and it said you know what there's a script for that so <laughs> you can fetch the scripts alright and let it do its thing for you they just want to make sure that you do a couple of, of checks before. Now this first one, perform the steps in the firewall boot partition subsection, I can already tell you guys, right, with confidence that you're fine. All right, so that meets the criteria. They just want to make sure that it's able to do it. Now this is coming from devices that are probably uh, uh, have uh, PFSense physically installed on them, so they gotta, they gotta be careful. Um, so I'm gonna just mark that as being okay. All right. How do I know that? Well, I did it last night, and everything came out fine. <laughs> so, but this next one I am going to do, and that says change package repository. So, if we scroll up a little bit, all right, and they really didn't name that correctly. Um, it's this guy right here. All right, change package names, and we're going to run both of these commands in the CLI. So I'm just going to hit copy. I'm going to go back to my pfSense to get to the command prompt. It's going to be 8. All right. And then I'm just going to paste it in there. And we get a warning saying, oh, no, major upgrade, whatever. So, uh, so that's step 1. And then we're going to change the name again here. All right. Copy. And my paste. I'm going to hit Enter. And there you go. I'm good. That's what they wanted me to do, so I did it. That's fine. So uh, <laughs> then I continued with my, my, this is the extent of my Linux experience, right? Copying and pasting commands into the command prompt. Uh, so now I'm just going to go ahead and run these commands in kind. Isn't that kind of neat? So I'm going to first download the scripts, all right, by just copying and pasting that in. As you can see, it, it's 
it got it, which is awesome. And then, uh, let's see here, then we're going to run the script. And then, and uh, what the script is going to do is all of these steps that are required for us. So here we are. That's it. Done. Your system was converted to full. Please upgrade it immediately or you will die. So um, we're going to do it through the command prompt. Here we go. And that is going to be PF sense upgrade with the dash Y to accept the prompts. That way we can go and eat some cheese and crackers while we're waiting. So, and there you go. Now, I actually left this running last night and went to bed. So I really do not do not know how long it took to do the upgrade process. All I do know though, is that I wasn't prompted for anything. I just came back and it was upgraded. So I'm gonna once again, pause the video right here I, I really do have some cheese and crackers. That's how, that's how cool I am that I'm going to consume. And uh, I don't know. We'll continue once it uh, gives us some kind of prompt. So see you guys in just a second. All right, guys. After a few reboots and uh, about 15-ish minutes waiting, uh, I got the screen that we had before. But now, you can see that it's up to date. In fact, it's uh, pretty up to date. It's a couple weeks old. So there you guys go. And by the way, when I say reboots and waiting, I didn't do anything once the upgraded process happened. I mean, I just sat here and watched the, the text scroll on by. So I'm going to end the video there because once again, I still don't know if this would be considered a uh, prequel bonus video to what we're doing next. But in the next set of videos, we're going to go ahead and tweak this uh, IP address here and uh, use the IP address that we're actually going to use in our topology. And then we, we're going to have to configure the FortiGates uh, enough to where we can get into the um, web GUI for our PFSense. So because even though we can just fine use these command prompts here, uh, it's just such a neat experience diving into that PFSense that I'd much rather do it through the uh, the web interface. So, all right, guys, hopefully that was helpful. And I still feel like that was a lot easier than doing the ISO method. And um, yeah, awesome. All right, there you guys go. We upgraded PF sets. So I'll see you in the next videos. Bye.